Good morning and very warm welcome to you all. It's good to be together to worship. Let us call each other to worship using the words on the screen and yours are the white words. I'll say the golden words. We gather in the great cloud of witnesses and in their stories we tangle our own all held in God's hand uh -huh. into the greater community of the faithful let us worship together. And let us sing, love divine, all love success. Worth 
cherishing and embracing. Often we neglect such self-reflection and hesitate from recognizing that we are special. Not special in the terms the world uses, but special in being your children, loved by you. Lord, often we undermine the potential you planted in each one of us. We hold back and think others will do it. And yet you are calling us to change things, to lend our hand, to speak the word in time, to alleviate the need we see. Forgive us when we hold back, when we hide away from getting too involved, when we play it safe out of fear of embarrassing ourselves if we do something wrong. Forgive us when we are too quick to compare ourselves unfavorably with others and decide to hide our light rather than letting it shine to help others in this world with the warmth of your transforming love. Merciful God, thank you for your mercy, for your assuring love. You want to set our feet on right paths and you want to renew us time and again, giving us new chances and opportunities to serve you in this world. So be with us this morning and teach us again. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done earth on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
And all of these things we can do, and there's many more we could list, are all things that God wants us to use to help each other, even having fun with hula hoops. So don't think it's not necessary. God, has, God gives us lots of things, lots of abilities, lots of talents, and wants us to use our talents and our jobs to help each other and to, to show our love. Somebody said this morning, love is not a feeling, Love in the Christian sense is not a feeling, but is an activity. So we are supposed to use our talents to serve God. And I wanted to tell you a quick story about a man who was called Martin. Remember, the, the grown-ups will know where St. Martin of Tours is, the building. It's named after this man. The Martin lived a long time ago, and he was a soldier. Okay? And he was, he was quite high up, so he had a horse. And he, had, he, was, he was working in, in Roman times, so he was having a, a, all his armor on, and he had a big red cloak. It was very wide and very long, and it was great when you were cold. You could wrap yourself up and keep warm. And one day, Martin, the soldier, was riding through the snow, like that. And then he stopped, because there, at the roadside sat a man in the snow and he had very poor clothing on he just had rags on and he was shivering like that so what do you think martin did he stopped his oh he stopped and his horse stopped and you know what martin did he got off the horse and he tied the horse to the tree so it wouldn't run away and then he took out his sword because he had a big sword in his in his, at his side, and he took off his coat, the big red cloak coat, it was like a big blanket. He took it off, and he took his sword, and he cut the coat in half. And all of a sudden, he had two pieces of red cloak. And he gave one of them to the beggar, and put it around him to keep nice and warm, and the other half he put back on himself, so he could keep warm too. Wasn't that a nice thing to do with Martin? And because he was such a kind man, later on people called him St. Martin. That's why St. Martin, and he became later on a bishop. That's why he's St. Martin of Tours. Okay? Right. I have failed in bringing the story that well, I have chosen for it, so just read that story. And maybe somebody could read it um, afterwards. Tommy could maybe read it to you? Yeah? Great. Let's sing a song. Here we go. What are we singing? I forgot. Bless the Lord, O saints and servants. <laughs>
first reading is from Hebrews, starting at chapter 11, verse 29, and running through to chapter 12, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release, in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God.
second reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Praise be to God. Let's sing, Behold What Witnesses Unseen. Friday, 
as you know, was All Saints Day. And that is marked in the Roman Catholic Church by, uh, as, uh, uh, with special services, and it caused people, certainly in Germany, to go to the uh, um, flower shops and buy special wreaths, which were then taken to the family graves. And I always thought that was a nice thing to do. Um, they had little special candles as well, so, so you could see the, the graves of the Catholic families had all these little candles lit and, and a beautiful new arrangement. Some of the saints, though, are not just the family people, but are people who are worth remembering because of the stories that, they, that we know of them. People like Peter and Paul, of course, from the Bible, or pe people like St. Martin, the story I told <coughs> Rosie. And then there are all saints, St. Cuthbert's. I have to admit I know nothing about him. I must better, I better read up on him. And St. Magnus, I know more about him in Orkney. The cult of saints and their relics began with the martyrs in the early church. The faithful would soak a little bit of cloth in the blood of those who died in martyrdom. And then later on the church decided that some of these martyrs would be buried in special places, in the churches for example. And that led to the relics, to an availability of bones and other is things from those people to be available. There was a time, apparently, when the early church, every church should have um, a relic under their communion table, under their altar. And that availability of bones and other materials from sainted people led to a whole new blossoming of worship. And it got a bit weird and wonderful too. The rich and the powerful thought, ah, we'll get extra protection and power if we have and own some relics. Kings and princes would collect them, loads of them, and have make uh, elaborate casings for them, which you can now see in treasuries of cathedrals or museums. The demand for bones of the saints far outstripped the supply. Gregory the Great, who was one of the early church fathers, refused um, the wish of the empress, in the, one of the Byzantine empresses, to have a piece of St. Paul. But later on, there was no such hesitation of dismembering the poor saints' bodies. According to the principle of shared wealth, churchmen cut up the poor saints as farmers would cut up seed potatoes. They just thought a little bit would do the trick. Eventually, in the Middle Ages, the late Middle Ages, the number of saints had increased to a staggering 25,000. Most of them were only local, but some were known in special in the certain countries, and if you wanted to be known by the royal church, you had to be approved by the Pope. The cults of the really popular saints spread very fast and also very widely. So there are some saints who are venerated in two towns and places at once, and some have actually two heads. It got a bit weird. When the Reformation erupted in the 16th century and disrupted the church, that was one of the things that was challenged by Martin Luther and other reformers. The veneration of saints became decried as nonsense by the protesting churches, the reforming churches. And yet, when we're honest, Today, people are still looking for examples to follow. People whose lives were so impressive or whose talents are so impressive that they should serve as examples. Papers and organizations sometimes publish lists of famous people. People who 
were very, are very popular or had a special talent or are very wealthy. There are competitions for the best actors or the best musicians, the best sports personalities or scientists. And I suppose that will never stop as long as there are people and uh, their talents that uh, they can excel in. What worries me though is that nowadays there are people who are called influencers. For what? For no particular reason at all, other than having a, somehow attracted a huge following on social media. For selling things, basically. Clothing or makeup or cars or whatever. It is, for some of them, their main job. And they become wealthy by it. They're known and famous. Does it matter? Well, what matters is who is our example? Who do we spend our life, our time and energy on following? So it matters whom we choose to be our example. Will we aim to look like and be like the influencers? who advertise expensive products and treatments because we're worth it? Or will we, will we really feel like a lesser human if we don't achieve their looks? What about our inner moral and ethical standards? One of the, a couple of influencers, I think, are the Tate brothers. You have heard on the news about them who have a worrying number of admirers and a very negative attitude towards women. For all our talk of equality, the number of rapes in our world has increased, even if we allow for the increasing courage of women to report such abuse. Why are men and women not able to respect each other and love each other and care for each other in a supportive way. The letter to the Hebrews gives us a list of faithful people. People are, who are to be remembered for their faith journey. Does that help to know that list? People like Abraham and Sarah, Moses, David, Samuel and all the other prophets? Or will it make us feel small? Because they are the giants of faith who achieve. And what can we do? We are just little people. Yet the letter of the Hebrews tells us these lessons list to encourage us. You can do it, he is saying. The people he's listing have not reached the goal. They just journeyed as we are. The journey towards the kingdom of God is still ongoing. And all of us are on the way. All of us are called to travel as best we can to serve. And let the light of God's love shine through our lives. We are saints in training with large L plates on, if you like. And of course, there is not one way of being God's servant, as there is no one way of living. We are all needed with our talents to follow Jesus' example and his teaching in order to come closer to God and in loving God, loving each other. And Jesus makes us think in a new way how this service is to be achieved. It doesn't matter whether we're beautiful or not. It doesn't matter if we own expensive products or not. Not power or wealth or success is what counts in God's thinking. God will bless us in a new, astonishing way. And Jesus lists them in his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Those who think 
not belittling themselves, but think of themselves in the right way, not making themselves bigger than others. Blessed are those who are merciful, who are pure in heart, who are peacemakers and seek justice and right living, even when they are loved. Jesus, in giving us this way of looking at life, is turning the normal way of looking at living, with achievements being, having a big pay packet and being known by ever so many people, upside down. Jesus says that's not important. Your kindness, your love is what matters. Your closeness to a God who gave himself up to serve this world, this creation, this creation. Someone wrote what an angel might be saying. It's angel time. Right, listen to me. I, Mrs. You there, I'm talking to you. And the guy sitting behind, yeah, yeah, I can see you there just hiding behind the pillar. Today, there are no dazzling lights, no sparkling stars or angelic choirs to grab your attention. For if truth be told, God likes to use ordinary people. And everyday situations he likes to use as well to get the message across. God wants you to know he is accessible, available to you, regardless of the situation in which you might find yourself. You see, as an angel, a messenger of God, we are called to point out the obvious. And you would think that's an easy thing to do. If truth be told, people are always wanting miracles, always wanting the spectacular, always expecting the incredible. And folks, you like, you like living in dreamland rather than being happy to be in your own land. Faith? No. Not Adam faith, that hipster pop star, but faith. Faith is about having complete trust and confidence in God. That kind of faith has been demonstrated by church people time and again. Ordinary people like Gordon Ferguson in Australia, who, when he was diagnosed again with cancer, trusted that God would help him through the doctors. And God did indeed help him. And now, he's, it's been announced last week that he's in remission after his treatment. Or faith like David and Kathleen, who cared for their disabled son every day, cleaned up his mess, gave him his medicine, tried to sense what he might need as he couldn't talk. And just ask God to give them strength to do what needs to be done each day. You'll know others. Or like Nan Reddy, who worked as a deaconess with young people and their families for over 50 years. And never once lost her faith. And you should have seen how many people came to her service of Thanksgiving on her anniversary. Or what about Jimmy? Or Billy? or Bill and Sheila and Susie, or so many others who turn up every week to put the chairs out, or make sure the water is on for the church tea, or all the work at food banks or Fresh Start, and tell us what we can do to help. I, no doubt you can recall the people down through the years who have helped you, supported you, bent at you, and help you to become the person you are. Maybe you can recall the people who have inspired you. From the pages of a book, or the television show or a film, 
or even from something you have seen on social media, media, it's not all bad. Where ordinary people have done amazing things. God is in all these situations. Our church in this part of the world might be in decline, but it's growing in other places. It's flourishing inside you too. And maybe it's time you let that seed grow, that God through you radiates out and touches others. Faith is about hanging in there, overcoming the odds, and trusting in the God who called you and who is speaking to you now in this place, this time, this instance. You've got to trust me because I'm an angel. And if you won't trust my words, then trust God's words and live the life of peace, contentment and happiness, for that is what Christianity is all about. Live the faith. Be part of the great cloud of witnesses who seek to make God's kingdom real and coming. Ah, you better be all listening to me or else. Amen.
morning and bless all our giving that they may serve you and the coming of your kingdom amongst us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A big thank you to all of you who helped yesterday at the coffee morning, which was uh, quite a sellout affair. We ran out of rolls and bacon and all sorts of other goodies and raised over 500 pounds for church funds. So well done. And thank you for all you contributed. After this service today, uh, we'll have coffee again as usual. And as you come past the kitchen door, there will be a table with stuff on. Now we've had a gift of, uh, from, from a, a, a guide group who was staying the weekend in Edinburgh from the Midlands, I think, the East Midlands, and instead of throwing their leftover food and provisions out into the bin, bless them, they decided to pass them on to a deserving church, and it's us. <laughs> so they came out here with these bagfuls of things. Some are, things are closed and shut, but there are other packets which have been a sort of half used. So if you're not um, feeling, you know, repulsed by that and are trusting that the, that the guides behave themselves properly, um, please help yourself and take it away so we don't have to throw it in the bin. Because it's always better to use things up than throwing th things into the bin. We've also had this lovely gift of flowers from Sacha. Sacha is obviously not with us this morning, but it's from her work and I must ask her what she's working as because aren't they beautiful, these flowers? So thank you to Sasha. Um, and if you have any items um, that you would like to put into the Christmas Tower magazine, um, Skjona's asking for items um, by the 17th of November. So that would be lovely. Tonight we're going to meet uh, as the film club in the annex, so please come along. Um, we're going to watch a film called Wag the Dog with Dustin Hoffman and Robert De Niro amongst others at 7 o'clock and then we're going to have a chat about it and you're all welcome and it's, it's always nice to watch these films together and then have a chat about them, not very long ago, just sort of say what we think about it. So you're all welcome to that. On Tuesday night there will be a, the Presbytery meeting at 7 o'clock in Palmerston Place. Please think of me, I'm still the moderator. On Wednesday, the Guild is meeting um, and uh, they're going to have a talk about Edinburgh street style, fashion through the ages, which sounds very exciting. On Thursday, we're going to meet, I think in the Annex, um, to think about living uh, discipleship, Christian discipleship, using Eric Little's reflections. And the topic this month is law and sin. So that could be interesting. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday, just to warn you. Um, we're going to meet 10 minutes earlier than usual, so at 10 to 11, to make sure that we are all ready and in time to have the minute silence at, at 11 o'clock. And it's followed by soup uh, and sandwiches, because it's soup Sunday, which you can go to, or you can have come with me first to the War Memorial in North Markison Cemetery. Um, it's up to you. The scouts will be here, so it will be a lively service. We've had a letter from St. Martin's, our uh, the Scottish Episcopal Church congregation that we work with or quite frequently, and they have been told by a charity that we've been supporting called Help All Land that the Edinburgh Integrated Joint Board has decided uh, to disinvest from, that means with not give any further money to 64 local charities. So this is quite a blow for charities who were providing um, services for all sorts of groups and people about health aspects and for health all around, but I think it's the same decision which has, is affecting forward and their People Know How charity, um, which is, pardon? Oh, sorry. So, so think of all these charities who suddenly find themselves with not having any money. Sadly, the letter came too late for us to take part in the letter writing campaign and the demonstration um, at the, I can't remember where it is, 
and uh, the demonstration outside the city chambers, which was on the first, that was Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. So think of them all because it's big changes for all these charities who've been working hard to provide for the needs of people. More, some, uh, an appeal from our own, um, for our own folks here, for our two little ones, our regular uh, Rose and Rosie. They're getting to an age now where they need a little bit more structure. I mean, I usually bring the story back, um, but I think it would be nice if we had a, a little rota, not for, to do a whole Sunday school lesson in the old sense, but if one of you, one of us, every Sunday could go out with them after I've done my bit at the beginning and read them the story. That would relieve a little the, the pressure on the parents um, and give the, the children um, another voice to, to hear the story. And it'll be a, a story from a children's Bible or a, 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 a one of the, the stories, you know, a retelling that is hopefully age appropriate. Just look at the pictures uh, read the, the words on the pictures and talk with them a little and then come back in. The, ch the parents go out with you and then the children can play after the story. But I thought it would be giving a little bit more input for the children um, and, but then you can rejoin the service hopefully for the sermon. Um, you, you just miss the readings or thereabouts. <laughs> so if you are willing to do that Please speak to me. I sh next week I'll bring a sign-up sheet um, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll do it as an experiment. Thank you. I think that's all the announcements. Let's sing together. Rejoice in God's saints today and all days. Some see themselves as living as faithful disciples now. But even where there is no admission of a personal faith, we recognize the countless good people in societies today, as well as in the past, who have selflessly given of themselves for the sake of others. 
Lord, you have made us in your image and therefore we can do good. You have made us as people who can reflect your goodness in our own living. We thank you for this. And we thank you for all the carers and relatives who took care of us and others and still take care of those who need a helping hand, today's saints. We thank you for those who work in the NHS, doctors and nurses, porters, technicians, all those who work in social care in any capacity, today's saints. We give thanks for those who work in our emergency services, showing willingness to put others first, today's saints. We thank you for those anonymous people who in small ways and sometimes big ways make a difference, today's saints. We pray for all who feel unappreciated and for all who are uncertain of what qualities they might possess. We pray for the world, especially for all the places where there is instability, where there is extremism or war or famine or poverty. We pray for people who are living under regimes which force them to do bad things. Regimes which inhibit freedom. We pray for the people in the USA who are about to go to vote for a new president. God guide them and give them all strength. Sustain your saints wherever they are in serving you and others. May your spirit inspire and fuel the work, work they do in your name. God, make us bold that we might act too, yet not too confident as to think we can do it all ourselves. God, make us willing that we might put ourselves forward, yet not in a way as to be obstacles to the offering of others. God, let us be sure of who we are, yet not in a way that denies the possibility of change. God, let us be ready to use words to influence and bring change for the good, not in ways that hurt or offend. God, let us advocate for what we believe in, and not just by our words, but by our actions. Yet let us be careful we seek the right things as your gospel demands. Lord, we may never become saints with a capital S, but help us know we are saints all together in your name. Invited, called to share your work in this world. All this we ask in Jesus' name, to whom we all glory and honor with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn is Glory to You, O God.
Be bold, be courageous, be loving. And the blessing of God Almighty, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Thank you.